form. Mickey, let's have a look at the, the side Norma Plummer's putting out. Yeah, obviously a firm interest in some debutantes in Chadine van der Meer, who plays her first Netball World Cup. But interesting more to see that defensive combination of Carla Pretorius and Pumza Mawaini in that defensive end. I think they're going to be explosive today. And head coach Wesley Pepe Holmes. Well, Mr. Gomes has gone in the wing attack position. She starts John Davis, and that is significant, Mickey Austin, because? Because the 40-year-old world record holder, she is the sit, or about to face her sit Netball World Cup, which is the highest in history. Props to her. This should be a great one for her and her memory. Absolutely rocking here. Helen George, Louise Travis, the two umpires taking charge of this first evening match on court two. South Africa want to start strong. There's a bit of a vibe around the South African squad in recent months, Mickey Austin. This is a big deal for South Africa and Trinidad and Tobago. They want to start their World Cup campaign with a bang. Yeah, 100% for lots of different reasons, really. You know, Netball South Africa have been that nation that have been building for so long now. We saw in the quad series in January them run some of the best teams this world have got to offer. So close to extra oh, time, losing out attack. by one. And I'm sure Norma Plummer will have big plans for them and the next few days of competition to see where they fare at the end of this first round stage. So it's been 40 years since Trinidad and Tobago won that world title on home soil back in 1979. On the attack, the shot of the match, a clap for herself in the goal attack position. Khalifa McCollin gets the Trinidad and Tobago side underway. Yeah, and I'm absolutely certain we will see that consistently across 60 minutes. Khalifa has been one of the stalwarts um, playing at Celtic Dragons this year. And she has just been announced that she's going to be playing her trade over in New Zealand for the Southern Steel for next season. So high percentage shooter, super, super accurate and really creative. On to four goal defence obstruction. So Lenise Pockheater gets the South African side on the scoreboard. 15 minutes, four quarters. Pumza Mawaini coming out of the circle, hunting really high in that goal circle. Her and Carla Pretorius have got such a good partnership. Happy to cover for each other, happy to go out of that circle and have a hunt really early on, so setting the precedence early. So, South Africa on the centre pass. Contact. Gets it into a shooting position. No, back, please. And you see that trademark first, second quick shot there from Lise Potgita. And umpire Louise Travis not Goal having attack, any of it. Yes. So important for the players and the teams to start to get a rhythm at the World Cup, as it is for the officials as well. Yeah, on this absolutely. First day of action. And all you hope for is nice, clear, and concise instructions, and we can hear that from both umpires nice early on, and that gives the players the best possible chance to be able to adapt their game, see what they can get away with, or more importantly, what they absolutely can't get away with. Fantastic roll into that circle there from Sammy Wallace. We see that partnership and the feed going straight into the circle, almost telepathic. It was, it was a wonderful pass by John Davis, who we've mentioned in that wing attack position. Works as a CSI investigator in, in Trinidad and Tobago, the 40 year old. So at the moment, end to end, early doors in this match between South Africa and Trinidad and Tobago. No international warm-up matches in Trinidad and Tobago for their side, but they did come and play in the Wales Summer Series, Mickey, that was on just before, as all the international teams did, tried to get the warm-up matches in, the practice in, the combinations hit. Yeah, absolutely, and, you know, fair credit and fair play to, to Wales for putting their disappointment for not being at the Netball World Cup behind them to make sure that they're getting that regular high-caliber standard of match play. Um, and by all accounts, they, they put on an absolute show for the teams that came to represent. We saw Trinidad and Tobago actually lose their game there, but, you know, when you're running combinations and you're trying to expose people to pressure, you know, it's, it's not really for the purposes of winning, so we're not really surprised by that. So a tight start, as expected between these two sides. Norma Plummer going up against Wesley Go, South Africa and Trinidad and Tobago. Nice retrieve, get herself back into the position. And Hot Heat has started well. And once again, the centre pass will go Trinidad and Tobago's way. That partnership that Lenise Potgita and Marika Holthausen has in that shooting circle is so key. So Marika there swing all the way through the baseline, which split those defenders and enabled the space for Potgita to open up. So have a look for that when the ball comes down the other end. 
soft hands there from Sammy Wallace, and that's absolutely not something we expect to see from her. You know, she has been an absolute superstar for New South Wales Swiss this season, one of their standout players and one of the reasons why they're sitting at the top of the table in the league that they compete in out in Australia. So both sides having to be a bit patient here, pushing towards the maximum defense, three second contact. hole rule that you have in netball. Defensively. The teams are working well and shooting wise as well. As Pogita puts another one in, five from five, the South African goal shooter now gives her team a three goal advantage. Again, you see that interchange in that shooting circle, great speed through the baseline by Holtzhausen and the great trust and understanding in their partnership from uh, Lenise Pogita to come all the way outside of that shooting circle. And she was very, very happy with that long range shot early on. So. TNT, it's just easier to say, Nikki. TNT on the charge. <laughs> just to, rolls off the to, tongue, doesn't it? Pull one back here. Lines up the shot. That will do a lot for the confidence. A little bit of touch of appreciation between the shooting setup of McCollin and Wallace. Gets Trinidad and Tobago. Three behind now. Five minutes gone already in this match. South Africa leading by three. Well, you see both teams struggling with a little bit of penetration towards their circle edge early on, having to play the ball backwards, open up the angle on the other side of the court before they're trying to go long and driving towards that circle edge. A little bit of a chess match early on. No team wants to lose possession or take any risks. Well, gone are the days in a Netball World Cup. And you maybe have a couple of easy matches through the first few days of the competition. Now it has such an impact from the very first centre pass of how you play and how you set yourself up. And a beautiful piece of work there and communication for Trinidad and Tobago ends in another goal. Yeah, we've seen that from Khalifa McCollin all year. She can actually do the split, she's super flexible, and we've seen her do that on court before as she takes the ball. So we know that she's got lovely long range in her split, and she's going to use that to maximise her potential to get her closer to that post. So South Africa step forward again by Lanise. Oh, a miss. That's rare so far, and a good pickup by Trinidad and Tobago. Now they've got to capitalise. Shaquanda Green has been niggling away at the East Pot Gita in that goalkeeper position for Trinidad and Tobago. She's been getting the call from the umpire, drawing the eye, but she stuck with it, and she got one of those really important rebounds, and that's going to be key for Trinidad and Tobago if they want to be able to pull out an upset in this game. Nice. Nice play. Trinidad and Tobago qualifying for this World Cup undefeated in the Americas regional qualifier in September. And they're getting a little bit of a rhythm now because they're one down oh, after being three or four down at one point. And look at that. And a basketball star layoff. Rizzle Tippett esque their layup for Samantha Wallace in that shooting circle. Having a go at landing one, two, and then releasing the ball before that grounding foot touches the floor again. Therefore, it's not footwork. You know, you can be really fluid around that rule, providing you're quick enough and have the skill to execute. And I'm sure Sammy Wallace will be very grateful that that came off at a key moment of the game. So, so nice applause. In the crowd with a mopping up job done here on court number two here at the MS Bank Arena. Nice. Balls being fired in now by South Africa. A little bit of break in play. Trinidad and Tobago wouldn't want that because they're on a little bit of a roll there, pulling it back. Yeah, you know, you say that, but here she is again asking for that floor to be wiped. Is it tactical? Is it not? You know, having played netball myself for the best part of a decade now, there are ways that you can have a break in play. Now that you can't have injury timeouts, there's no such thing. If you call that injury, you have to be removed from the court. So players can be pretty sneaky, shall we say, at calling that time out to get the ball wiped or the floor wiped, just to give you an extra second to take a breath. Tactics of world-class netball. There's one of the rules. New viewers joining us around the world, of course, for this Netball World Cup. There's Trinidad and Tobago line up another one. Under eight minutes remaining then of this first quarter, and it's back to one now with South Africa. Looking to extend the lead that they had, Bongi and Zomi, for South Africa in that wing attack position. And the best players that South Africa have. And there's that partnership between Erin Berger and Lanise Potgita. 
They have got almost instinctive intuition in each other. They've played together for years. Their current teammates are the Queensland Firebirds. So they have the ability to be able to just put ball into space, release ball, let it go and trust each other. And that really paid off in that last passage of play. Well, this is good play by both of these sides early doors in this first quarter. The Calypso girls, as they're known, just one still behind South Africa as they pop another one in. It's the speed, though. They want to get it back in the centre pass. Let's go. Let's yeah, go. and I mean, if there is ever a danger sign, it's that passage of play right there. Confidence, first phase, ball lands inside the centre third. First look, turn quickly, sight your shooter inside that shooting end. That was a really smooth passage of play there. But, you know, it doesn't matter as long as the ball goes through the net. And we see Trinidad and Tobago at the other end, happy to pay that tiki-taka style of netball, that give and go, pass and cut. And then Khalifa McCollin was really smart there about drawing the contact to get herself a free shot. Over. Khalifa McCollin playing well for Trinidad and Tobago. So 24th birthday next week. Debuted in a local league in netball, age six. So South Africa looking to extend it back to two. But we know when it goes back into the centre pass of Trinidad and Tobago. They're going to look to draw it back to one. Coming up to five minutes remaining of the first quarter. And funny you should mention birthdays, because we actually have a birthday today on the South African bench. Is Izette Grizzles. Birthday today, so happy birthday, is there? Well, once you get time on court, something to tell your grandkids in a few years' time. I can't imagine she's going to Norma and asking <laughs> to be put on just because it's her birthday. Is it worth a try? No, yeah. probably not. Norma is very good at her job and quite terrifying. <laughs> and definitely not a good time to ask her when Trinidad and Tobago keep pulling the lead back and getting within touching distance of her side. Fantastic tip there from Guerrero. Aguero, she will be all oh, Bobby and Tomi trying to wing the ball back there. Infringed with that contact. Fantastic defensive work from that centre position, Candy Guerrero. These are the possessions that they must score if they want to have a chance at winning. And just as we say that, Pumza Moeni earns her money and comes out with the outside arm all the way round, shooter, clean as you like. Holtzhausen pops another one in. Keeps her record at 100% so far. And the attempts that she's taken. 13 leading 11, four and a half minutes remaining. See a little bit of action. The players for the South Africans on the top left of the shot, keeping warm as we head towards the end of the first quarter. Patient build up this by Trinidad and Tobago. Probably worth just highlighting the absolute battle that is going on between the two centers on court at the moment in Erin Berger and Candy Guerrero. Off the ball, on the ball, they are absolutely tussling away and not giving each other an inch inside the middle of the court. Well, they've got a full set of World Cup medals, Trinidad and Tobago. The gold, a silver and a bronze in their time. In South Africa, their best World Cup back in Birmingham in the centre of England in 1995 when they picked up a silver medal. But they've improved a lot under Norma Plummer, who won World Cup gold herself with Australia in 1975. And she's going to desperately want to start with a good match here before playing Fiji tomorrow night, South Africa. Yeah, exactly. Same with Nicole Cusack, who's the assistant coach of South Africa. She played for Australia at the 1995 Netball World Cup and won gold as well. So they've got that pedigree going all the way through their bench. Absolute tussle there and fight for the ball on the edge of the circle. Unfortunately, though, if you have a C on your bib, you are not allowed inside the shooting circle. So probably a little bit extra there. But, you know, when, when you're wearing your country colours, you absolutely can't give any ounce of possession up. Well, decides to pass it across. Holtzhausen does to Pogita. And she puts another one in. Now we're back to three, the lead for South Africa. Trinidad and Tobago snipping at the heels, contact. snapping at the heels even of South Africa on every given occasion. There's Bongi Mzomi, plays for the UK Super League side Wasps on the Super League previously. Lost it this year in the Super League final in the UK to Manchester Thunder, but a real pitiful part of the South African team. You see the players maybe glancing up every now and again to their left because there's a huge set of four screens above us here between the two courts at the arena and it's reflecting the score down to the fans and the players.
great work rate from the South African attackers on defence there. You see Marika Holtzhausen coming out of a tip. So important, even though you are, in inverted commas, an attacker, you are willing to put that defensive work rate in. Creativity from Khalifa McCollin there, stepping on, releasing ball in the air. You see that split land. And Sammy Wallace with that really big hand up in the air saying, give me the ball, I want the ball, I'm presenting for you. Just put it there and trust me. Two minutes remaining of the first quarter. 16-13 to South Africa. Passed obstruction, goal defence. Pushed all the way here, as expected by Trinidad and Tobago. Very similar in terms of statistics, the average age of the South African side, just under 28 years old. 25 for Trinidad and Tobago, so a little bit younger if you bring them all together collectively. But that's nice, we're coming up to 90 seconds to go, pulling one back on South Africa's centre pass. Yeah, do you know what? I would say if you look across the court, I think every single South African is winning their individual battle, apart from that one that's going on inside Trinidad and Tobago shooting circle in Sammy Wallace. You saw that great change of direction on the baseline. And in the first quarter, we're already seeing a caution inside the uh, Trinidad and Tobago defending end. Their, their wing defence, Anil Jacker, is coming out with a caution already in quarter one. And that's definitely something that their coach, Gomes, is going to have to consider. Because as this game goes on and it gets more edgy, there's only going to be more contact. And if you're already drawing the eye of the umpire early on, then it's not going to be a good time. You'll see Shadeen van der Merv coming out of an interception there nice and early, getting her name on the board. She was named player of the series in that Wales-hosted series not too long ago. So we'll definitely be looking for her to make some match-winning moments inside this game. So at some point, as this match progresses, there will be, as Mickey Austin said, a match-winning moment. And we're coming up to 30 seconds remaining. It's the flexibility, it's the vision, it's the dynamic nature of Trinidad and Tobago that are keeping them in this match here. With 25 seconds remaining, another one popped in, 18-15. See the glancing up the clock that I mentioned, they know the clock is ticking down. Can South Africa pop another one in before the end of the first 15 minutes? Before the first team talk from Norma Plummer, yes, they can. And they're going to end this first 15 minutes having worked very hard indeed, the South Africans, to go into the second quarter with a lead, Mickey. Yeah, I think they have, and do you know what? They've earned it, as I say, those individual battles going on across the court. I think they've been ahead of 90% of them, so they'll be really happy to go in this first quarter time, three goals up. So the end of the first 15 minutes, South Africa 19, Trinidad and Tobago 15. 15 minutes gone, three more quarters to go, but it's South Africa, the world number five, that have the slight advantage. need to make sure there's multiple options on the ball they're willing to fake the ball you know we see four South African intercepts none for Trinidad and Tobago but all of those four have come outside the circle we see both Khalifa and Samantha Wallace sitting on a hundred percent shooting accuracy so when the shooters are getting serviced the ball they're absolutely deadly but they're just not getting the amount of ball that the South Africans are at the moment so we're just scanning the court here in front of us, see if there's any changes. We'll bring you up to speed, of course, throughout the match, if there are any, by Norma Plummer and Wesley Gomes. But at the moment, South Africa have come out with a little bit of fire in the shoes, now leading 21-15 with just the first minute going of this second quarter. That's what Norma Plummer would have wanted. A nice long wide ball across the shooting D. Berger in the centre position for South Africa. Nice little flick over by Bongi Mzomi, gets it into the shooter's hands. And once again, Pockita pops another one away. Centre pass then for Trinidad and Tobago. Got a bit of work to do here, seven up now for South Africa. Yeah, they do, and this is a really crucial time period of the game. You see the South Africans up in their pressure there, being willing to try and stifle the, uh, the Trinidad and Tobago attack. Because if you yes, get another yeah. turnover here, all of a sudden that ten, seven goal deficit goes to almost double figures. So it's really, really Contact. important and vital. Oh, we see a little bit of afters going on inside the shooting circle there. Mm. Sammy so Wallace giving Carla Pretorius a little bit of pat on the, uh, the old backside there, telling her, it's OK, I feel the contact, but I'm happy to take it. There she is, Carla Pretorius in the goal defence position for South Africa. With the opposite number, the goal attack, Luther McCollin, Trinidad and Tobago. 
making sure they're both aware that they're in this match here. The first match, remember, for both teams on day one in this Netball World Cup action. Some really slick, smooth play from Netball South Africa there in the Spa Proteus. Oh, and right on cue, Carla Pretorius is coming out with that standard run on body of goal attack. Flat, hard interception. And you see the team bench there being really, really happy with that. Well, happy indeed. It was a four goal advantage after the first 15 minutes. Already been stretched out to eight. Will it be nine? Make that nine for South Africa. Starting to get a, a little bit of their flow now. Like, like New Zealand earlier, Mickey yeah, Austin. It took a bit of time to get going. Yeah, but it is that, it's the timing the element. You know, you see Bongi and Somi there on the second phase of the centre pass being absolutely available and free as soon as the attacker in front of her turns. Same thing with Lenise Potkita inside that shooting circle. To get that amount of timing and that understanding between the two of you is so, so important. And it just means it's fluid and it's really, really frustrating for defenders. Smooth as you like shot there from Samantha Wallace. Mid range for her, but nice and confident. Nothing but net going straight through. Uh, supporters from all around the world here at the MS Bank Arena for this Netball World Cup. These two courts full of life, action, and colour. Wing attack, contact in line with me. Whistle goes. And that was unfortunate for South Africa because the defenders at the front of the centre pass line, Carla Pretorius, Shadeen van der Merv, Erin Berger, did a fantastic job at shutting down the Trinidad Tobago front line. But unfortunately, someone in the back gave away a contact penalty, which gives Trinidad time to relax, reset, collect their thoughts, and go again. So you can leave from McCollin there getting frustrated, a hand in the air when she catches the ball because she turns and there is absolutely no option. You see the lack of timing in the Trinidad and Tobago attack end. Everybody fighting for the same ball. While you were talking, Mickey, I was literally watching McCollin, the goal attack for Trinidad and Tobago, and Pretorius, the goal defense, <laughs> defense for South Africa. They're still going. The, 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 the little argy bargy off the ball. Who said <laughs> netball was non contact? Whoever said that needs to turn on their TV and have a look at what's going on currently in the international game because it is wild. I love it. Anyone would think it was a World Cup that comes round every four years. Super stuff. So, South Africa there. Nice little one two. Hot heater waits. Eyes on the 10 foot post. 27-18 now, the South Africans are leading. They've never finished lower than six in the World Cup, the South African side. Looking to make some waves here in Liverpool. Hard to shot, side wing defence. See that confusion of space and the timing. We were talking about both shooters offering for ball. Great shot from Samantha Wallace in the same court space, and, and that's just not happening at the other end. It's much more fluid. Erin Berger looks like she's got all the space and time in the world to catch ball. Same as Marika Holtzhausen, who's been owning that baseline for the first quarter and a half so far this game. So the Trinidad Tobago defence have got to switch onto that and shut off that baseline so that they've got the ability to work together as a twosome inside that shooting circle. So. Wesley Gomes is making a substitution in the centre position. Was Guerrero, who started in this match into centre. Bonding instruction centre! Well, I'm looking across because myself and Mickey Austin are literally about three, four metres away from the court here. And with the ball in her hand now in the centre position is Candice Guerrero. So maybe there was a change made previously. And she's back into that centre. And look, she's getting herself in position for the centre pass by South Africa. Because they need to hang in onto this one, Trinidad and Tobago, as they go into half time. Under 10 minutes now remaining. Do you know what? I am so impressed with the shooting circle of South Africa, the partnership between them and the way that they are able to interchange their roles. You see the shooter releasing outside circle, goal attack heading straight in there, so it's constantly confusing those defenders. They're not sure whether to go out and follow, whether to stay put, and it's really creating some absolute mayhem inside that Trinidad Tobago defensive circle. Bongi and Somi is ripping up the edge of the circle, passing and cutting from one side of the circle to the other at the moment. Her work rate is incredible, improving why arguably she's one of the best wing attacks in the world right now. 
Bonham without 98 caps at the start of this World Cup for Bondian Zomi. She will get her 100th cap here at this World Cup, but Victorious looks to the skies. There she is. And hands the ball back reluctantly to Trinidad and Tobago. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't sure which way that was going to go. You see Carla Victorious, their front position, two hands on ball, as I say earlier. Trademark running hard and flat on that goal attack shoulder to win ball. But umpire Louise Travis deeming. Goal attack, Khalifa McCollin having hands on that ball first. And again, a lovely shot from Samantha Wallace. But both shooters still sitting on 100% shooting accuracy, so just begging for more service. Construction, both out. Well, South Africa, I confidently predict, and they did put another one in. Yeah, Trinidad and Tobago on 100% from their 22 shots, but South Africa, well, their two shooting stars of Pogita and Holtzhausen, have only missed two between them. There is no love lost on this court at the moment, is there? You could pick out With any two players who are absolutely going at each other Whole to time. just gain an inch. And a Four smart goal. move by Samantha Wallace Close here, just getting some centre. breath and making sure that everybody gets time to collect their thoughts. Because this is an important goal for Trinidad and Tobago. Currently 7-12 down in the quarter to, to score at the moment. Defense. They're trying, they're trying to penetrate the defence of South Africa. And they've got to take their opportunities when it comes. You saw the disappointment on McCollin's face then when it rolled and popped back out. And Zomi, as Mickey Austin was saying, look at her absolutely everywhere in that wing attack position. The vision, the hands, the speed. Yeah, but so comfortable on the ball there. You see her there, her body moving quickly. Her movement is speed and dynamic, but then the minute she's got ball in her hand, she's nice and calm. That pass on edge of circle, she didn't release until the very third second. And that's a really hard skill to do when you've gone so quickly at full pace. That one, though, she took far too long on the ball, and therefore Trinidad and Tobago coming out with interception. Fantastic hands from Guerrero there on the edge of the circle. But too much skill and even too quickly for her own teammates. And the frustration is written all over Khalifa McCollin's face. I was just about to say some super skill and flair again by Trinidad and Tobago, but that time just a little bit too much. And in the meantime, in the blink of an eye, South Africa have got it back into their shooting D. Nice, nice grab, nice take. Pop Peter still shooting with just that one miss now. Absolutely super stuff at 96% with 26 of her 27 shots. Contact center, come on, it is that please, fine line, center. isn't it? And we talk about this all the time as a coach, you know. Playing with speed is brilliant and one of your biggest assets, but speed and control are two completely separate kettles of fish. So you can only play with speed if every part of your body is engaged and you are under control and it's a conscious decision. If you're out of control, you're off balance, it's not a conscious choice and you're being forced into something. And I can almost guarantee you it's going to go South Africa will have the centre pass directly in front of me is Wesley Petty Gomes, arms folded, no emotion from him even when his shooters are popping in 100% records, Khalifa McCollins now dropped down to 88% with just one miss, nothing from the head coach former Trinidad and Tobago basketball player himself before he got into coaching netball some 20 years ago. With his side, oh, I've got to hang in this with under five minutes remaining. Oh, oh straight direct, God. Mickey. Unbelievable oh. control and flair there from the lady of the moment, Rhonda John Davis, taking that ball, turning fully, vision straight to circle, and look at that arm on her, sighting Sammy Wallace oh, straight under the post. Attack. I think what she's saying is, I've still got it. Well, she That's has indeed, so breaking that Take record, those. as we said, at the top of the programme today, a six World Cup. The wing attack for Trinidad and Tobago. Martin, great wing attack. The third player ever in my country, game. though, to play in five World Cups, but now she's the most ever and the most capped player in the World Cup overall as well, 166 before she started today. How inspiring is that, though? For me as a netballer to sit here and say that, you know, she gives me hope to still be playing when I'm her age and playing well and beating players. You know, Shadeen van der Merv is no joke as a defender, one of the best wing defenders the world has got to offer at the moment. And at times, Rhonda John Davis is winning that battle, so more power to her. 
again, we see Carla Pretorius coming out and leaving the Trinidad and Tobago shooters standing still, feet stuck to the floor, wondering how on earth that happened. And as easy as you like, two options inside that circle. Goal attack rolling the front and giving a short option to Bongi and Somi on the edge. And a holding, presentable, nice and strong Lenise Pockita underneath that post. So South Africa on the centre pass. Doing it in the most direct way possible. Centre pass, two passes in resulting in a goal and 37-24 lead with three minutes coming up remaining until half-time. What are the half-time talks going to be, Mickey Austin from Norma Plummer and Wesley Gomes? Well, I mean, that last passage to play there is the difference, isn't it? We see Bongi Somi right from the centre pass, completely free and on her own, driving towards that, that circle edge. If, if your wing attack is landing circle edge with the ball, I'm not sure what your goalkeeper's meant to do. You know, there is only so much they can do. That's much better defence there. Dropping goal defence, stifling that straight line ball, going to circle edge, and all of a sudden, we've got a turnover. So this is much more positive from Trinidad and Tobago. I think Wesley will be alluding to his players that this is the key. If we want to beat South Africa and have a shot, we need to stop the second phase going towards the circle edge, that second pass that's heading towards the circle edge. But then we've got a reward possession. We can't be losing ball from a fumbling error, entering our shooting third, because South Africa, with the calibre of shooters they've got inside the circle and on the form that we're on at the moment, they will punish us. I think Norma Plummer will be so happy with her team. She'll be saying to her chargers, look, more of the same. We've got to make sure that we are dogged man on man. We are clean and we're picking the opportunities to go for ball because if we want to win this game, we've got to have all seven players in the game and we can't afford to be blown out on penalties. And we have to make sure we keep providing two options for the ball at all times. Five shots on wing defence. Once again, Rhonda John Davis proving that she can pull all of the skills out of her locker there. A great take from Sammy Wallace. Not even worrying about her landing space or the defender that's in the way. challenge there from Baptiste that was really really smart to come straight out of that penalty and be aware and alert and we almost see a ho hoist there unfortunately just forcing her into the body of the goal shooter causing a contact call which we're obviously not allowed to do so one minute 18 39 26 a few more whistles in the ending part of this second quarter a 13 goal advantage to the South Africans at the moment. It was just four, remember, that they had after the first 15 minutes. So, back line then for South Africa. Yeah, and again, we see a handling miscommunication error from the Trinidad Tobago players. Probably because we've had a new player in McCarthy come onto the court as a goal attack. So that's going to take a little bit of time for that connection, that new connection to solidify. She brings a little bit more height than Khalifa McCollin, who we saw leave the court just a second ago. So it'll be interesting to see what she can provide, considering Khalifa's left the court, only missing one goal. Well, talk about, let's see what she provides, what South Africa are providing is super shooting. And a lead at the moment with the final few seconds. Berger trying to get the ball in. He's going to get picked up by Trinidad and Tobago, but they're not going to have time to do anything with it. And the half-time whistle goes here on court two at the MS Bank Arena in this match on day one between South Africa and Trinidad and Tobago with the South African Proteas leading the Calypso girls 40 goals to 26. So Norma Plummer, Wesley Gomes will go in for their half-time talk. A few high fives going around the Trinidad and Tobago side. They really were in it after the first quarter. But the South Africans are turning the screw here on Trinidad and Tobago. And they're the ones with a 14-goal lead as we go into half-time. Can Trinidad and Tobago respond? We'll see after the half-time talks are had here in Liverpool. 
Jones. She's talking about what's going on inside the shooting circle. I think Trinidad and Tobago feel like the South African shooters are pushing off to gain back space. But, you know, we can see from the penalty stats that actually the umpires are seeing it. The penalty count at the moment is 23 for South Africa, 15 for Trinidad and Tobago. So I'm not quite sure what more they're meant to do. There's so much going on in the game nowadays that the umpires are doing the best they can with what they see. Um, and that's all they can do at the end of the day. But, you know, the reality of the situation is when you're 26, 40 down at half time, every little help. So it's probably not that bad of an idea to go and talk to the umpires because it will draw their eye to it more than they was looking at it before. Again, anything you could do to gain a little bit of an advantage. That's it, plant that sporting seed, as we say as sports people. <laughs> If you weren't aware of it before, let me just tell you that it might be an issue. Exactly, plant the seed and it will <laughs> grow, right? Still won't help if you're attacking and throwing the ball away, though, let's be honest about it. And unfortunately, that is the telling tale at the moment. We see 13 turnovers on the side of Trinidad and Tobago and only seven in terms of, or six, sorry, in terms of um, Netball South Africa. And generally, as a rule of thumb, we say as coaches, at this level, you want to be making maximum 20 errors a game a game in total so south africa are kind of on track to do that at the moment maybe just a little bit over but first game of the competition will give them time to grow and as we say that they had another error to their list because anise popkita absolutely gifts shaquanda green a possession of a two-handed intercept there and look straight up two hands on ball no elbow in the back she gets up as straight as you like and is able to take that penalty So contact call. And Trinidad and Tobago now yeah, have to take advantage of this. Up to the edge of the three-second holds at the moment, but patiently trying to penetrate the shooting circle to pull one back. And they do. Yeah, we see Khalifa McCollum back on at goal attack there for Trinidad and Tobago. They clearly missed her shooting accuracy on the court. And I mean, when she's one of the most deadly goal attacks in the UK Vitality Super League, why wouldn't you? And she says netball's been a life for McCollin. Her mum and her dad played, and she can't remember life without netball in it. Oh, Carla Pretorius there. She's such a sneaky silent assassin, just popping up at the right time to take two hand in interception. And as quickly as your eyes can blink, they are inside their shooting area. Great hands from Lise Potkita to pull that ball in, make it nice and safe and secure. Look at this, the work to step off, make that option look open, and then take that interception with two hands. Top class skill there from arguably the best goal defence the world's seen right now. It's a lovely play continuing from South Africa. And Bongi Mzomi looking at not a cross court Got long pass, it's a little bounce pass. See on the left with the shot. Keeper, please. Shouting directions, as she always does. And, attack. of course, her team listens to the experience that she has. And at the moment, South Africa now coming into a little bit of cruise control here. Look at that captain's take on one leg with the ability to turn and send that ball straight back to the third line. But again, teammates backing each other up, staying on that third line just in case you need an option. Mid-range shot there from Sammy Wallace, just off the boil slightly, but nobody under the post for rebound. Small margins matter. Maybe not today if this game's already done and maybe a little bit too far out of Trinidad Tobago's reach, but certainly for those future games that are coming up, you know, this is one of the tightly contested groups that we have in the competition. So many teams vying for positions, so even if this game or not for this game, but for future games in the rounds. Brilliant drive from Bongi Masoni in the pocket there, drawing those defenders out, making them have a look into that pocket. Two options again, splitting the defenders and East Pop Gita pop popping in the opposite direction so that Marika Hulkshausen sorry, can find her underneath the post. That is great team sport. Group C. As Mickey Austin mentioned, Trinidad and Tobago, South Africa, Fiji and Jamaica. Every now and again, you've got to laugh, haven't you? Depends if you're on the receiving end or not, so... Yeah, I was going to say. Candy oh. Squero there is not laughing because she feels that she's got an absolute two-hand into that circle. So feeling a little bit hard done by. But Shadeen van der Merve is not going to argue with the umpire on that one. So, caught back dry. Pistorius. Contact, wing defence. Contact Centre 
great front cut from Marika Holtzhausen. They're just rolling the top of that shooting circle, coming all the way from the back by the post, round to the front and presenting nice and strongly as a forward option for Bongi and Somi. And again, we see her take ball driving towards that circle. Contact almost on undefended defense. on the circle edge. She's been outstanding for South Africa today. Destruction, goal defence. Another one in, and a ripple of applause from the fans who have come in on this first day of action in Trinidad and Tobago. Into the circle, Wallace. Nice. And he still missed one goal, Sam Wallace, for Trinidad and Tobago. Constant slash with contact, wing defence. Just see by how hard Anella Jack is breathing in the background there as she got forward for that contact penalty. Just how deadly Bonki and Somi has been on her movement and her work rate through the whole game so far. Her opposition looks like she's a little bit tired, to be honest. Well, the first conversation, and he's having another one now, right in front of us. Wesley Gomes is talking to Anella Jack, the wing defence for Trinidad and Tobago, because what on Bongi Mzomi is basically doing to her is not good for her. But she's absolutely running a ragged and is trying to give her some form of direction. So as you say, Mickey Austin, hang on to one of the best wing attacks in the world. I think, Wesley Gomes, what he'll be saying is when, when Bongi Mzomi is up the court, so for instance near this two-thirds line, there is no need for you to be over-committing or going for ball or... or be trying to get in front of her when we're almost where the ball is now. There's no benefit to you doing that all the way up here. It's far away from where our goal is. Oh, great flying interception there from Shandamur. Unlucky not to come out with that. But there's, there's no danger when arguably one of the, the most deadly players on court right now is near the transverse line. Stop over committing and worry about her when she's closer to your shooting circle. That's where we can afford to pick up ball. And pick it up, and Zomi does. as quick as she's turning over ball down the other end on the transverse line is as quick as she's getting a circle edge feed and you see the smiles on their faces they're enjoying themselves out there isn't that nice to see it is a good south africa fan <laughs> they'll be loving this that's a good point it's a 19 goal advantage then for the south african side they'll play fiji tomorrow night and then jamaica on sunday that'll be a nice encounter south that, africa jamaica that game is monumental for huge. all sorts of fans across all the time. world so important no easy games in the netball world the cup and that's one to look forward to for them trinidad and tobago well, they'll play jamaica tomorrow in fiji on sunday night so the oohs and ahs of world-class netball, the cheers ringing around the MS Bank Arena. Remember, two courts here, Jamaica and Fiji. Jamaica having an absolute dream on the other court with a big score line against Fiji. But in the meantime, South Africa are leading Trinidad and Tobago here. Under seven minutes remaining of the third quarter. But what, what will the coaches, Mickey Austin, get out of this? It's the first match for South Africa and Trinidad and Tobago in a World Cup. What will Norma Plummer and, and, and Wesley Gomes be thinking so far going forward? Yeah, look, slightly different for both teams, but the reality of the situation coming into this game for Trinidad and Tobago, based on the world rankings, is it's important for us to get our feet under the table and firm some combinations. But the game that we'll be looking to target is our game tomorrow against... Uh, or our game later on in the week, sorry, against Fiji. You know, the reality of the situation, when you look at those world rankings, is as much as we would love this game to be so competitive, they're just at different stages. Um, South Africa, that's slightly different, you know. They're coming into this tournament. People are talking about them as, you know, contenders. Could they? Could they not? They've got a shot, that's definitely for sure. Um, so I think Norma Plummer will be really, really happy with their team. I think they look in absolute great shape across the board. They all look super, super fit and they look like they've got oh, engines to run for days and when you're playing so many games back to back in the tournament that's going to be really important but you know with a scored line like this 15 minutes still to play is that a time to rest some players maybe well there's a little bit of action on the south african bench 
none on the Trinidad and Tobago one to our right. We see some of the players warming up, potentially to be given a chance by Norma Plummer, because the statement of intent from South Africa is that they've arrived in Liverpool and they're in super-duper shape. But they showed us that, Mickey, at the beginning of the year. They had that three-goal win over England early doors in Let's January in the quad it. series. Let's not talk about it. But in a World Cup year, we all sat there and said, ooh, they're continuing to improve South Africa. 100%, and, you know, they've been that nation that have just slowly, slowly been creeping and clawing themselves away. And that is absolute credit to Norma Plummer and her coaching staff. And I think, you know, this being her last tournament, does that give them a, a little bit of added extra to want to make sure that they send her up and start for all of the hard work and commitment that she's put in in her head coach of, um, of South Africa? But, you know, they, they've definitely got a shot. I mean, it's hard to say, depending on who they play. As I say, that game with Jamaica is absolutely huge and it's going to have so much bearing over who faces who in the later stages. But, you know, you, would, you can't look past South Africa on the way that they've played today. Certainly the starting seven that they've got is very, very, very good across the board. So South Africa then controlling this one nicely. Under five minutes remaining in the third quarter. Another one goes in, 53-31. So changes are being made by Pepe Gomes. And Norma Plummer, I think. We see the goal attack. Jamila McCarthy come back onto the court for Khalifa McCollin. That's something that we've seen Pepe Gomez do in the first quarter as well. So maybe that's a position that he's still toying over, I mean, an ring over. And we also see Shadeen Van der Merv take a well-earned rest and go to the court. Three players all tussling all over the same ball there. That just goes to show you, international netball doesn't matter what the score is, as long as that clock is counting down and until that umpire's blown that final whistle, you keep fighting and scrapping away for every oh, single ball, and that's great to see. And even though it's a team sport, of course, seven players on court for each side. When a match is going on, you're fighting for your individual position as well. You've got a head coach on the sideline with a squad, and you want to say, listen, there's a reason why you bought me, and this is why you need to keep me on. Exactly, precisely that. You know, nothing is a given in international netball, and the reality of the situation is everybody is, unfortunately, only one injury away from a really big change or a lack of form. And, you know, that can happen to anybody. Fatigue, all of those factors are going to come into play. So it doesn't matter what the score is. Although it's a team game, you've got a bib on, you've got to earn the right to wear that bib every single minute you are out there, and that does never, ever, ever stop. As Rhonda John Davis has shown us since 1999. You know what, the rest of the Trinidad and Tobago squad were all bored in the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from and our little star today, Rhonda John Davis, making history in a six World Cup appearance. So under three minutes remaining then until the final 15 minutes between South Africa and Trinidad and Tobago. Remember, it was 19-15 to the South Africans after the first quarter. They stretched it out to 40-26 at half time. Guerrero back in the centre position for the Calypso girls. Great turnover from the new wing defence on court there from Kaysana. Good to see her making an impact straight away as soon as she's got that bib on, just as we was alluding to. Good choice to pop past the ball there from Mariah Holtzhaus and again continuing that strength of partnership. And we see this lovely clean hand, two-handed interception there. She'll be really happy with that, making an impact straight away, giving coach Norma Plummer something to think about. Contact goal defence. Yeah, well, Plummer's clearly happy with her shooting combination. Still Pogita and Holtzhausen in the goal attack and goal shooter positions. But I'll tell you who is not happy, and that is Baptiste in that goal defence position. We'll see her there following through on Lee's Pogita as she's just trying everything she can, desperate to win ball, but just not coming off for her today. Test. It happens nowadays. Coming up to one minute remaining. 56-32. A little flash up in terms of some of the wording that we use. A contest. 
foul allowed. Yeah, so it's just a way for the umpires to let the game flow, but they want to make sure the players know that they have acknowledged or they have seen oh, what's happened. Because generally, as a player out there, if you feel like you're getting hit constantly, you get you get a little bit miffed, shall we say. So if the umpire is saying oh, advantage, goal. contact or contest, it means that they are telling you they've seen it, but because it would be much more advantageous for your team to just play on they don't want to constantly blow their whistle so a really smart move from the umpires just to let the flow of the game go and at the moment the flow of the game since about the uh, maybe the start of the second quarter has definitely gone in the direction of south africa 20 seconds remaining 16 7 they're leading this third quarter in terms of goals the south africans and they take it up to 56 34 before the final 15 minutes of the first match for both of these sides. And Trinidad and Tobago put one in, they're gonna run down the clock. And a contact from Samantha Wallace underneath the post to end the game there, which means no chance of finishing on a goal. 56-34 is now what South Africa are leading Trinidad and Tobago by. It's going to be about any changes that both the head coaches make if they want to maybe look at combinations going forward. But at the moment, South Africa in total control. So welcome back to Liverpool. The final 15 minutes coming up. South Africa leading Trinidad and Tobago 56-34. And just before a little break there before this final quarter, I was alluding to the fact that maybe there may be a few changes by Coach Plummer and Coach Gomes. And it looks like that's the case. We're going to scan across and keep you up to speed. Siggy Berger's gone into the goal shooter position for South Africa. That's one Mickey Austin I've noticed as she <laughs> nearly grabs the ball as I uh, mention her name. Yeah, great to see Ziggy Berger out there getting her opportunity. A late addition to the squad, unfortunately, because of the injury that happened to Inna Marie Venter. We wish her well and hope she's recovering well. But no shock horror that the ball is going straight through the net for Ziggy Berger, one of the high or the highest, I should say, percentage shooter over in the UK Super League last season with 94%. So we expect to see nothing but accuracy. And it's almost as if Norma heard us earlier because the birthday girl herself. Isabel Gretel is on court in that wing attack position. Good for her to get a run out out there. Well, that's it. Coach is now using the opportunity. Contact called again. Everybody trying to calm down. Bongi and Zomi. Centre position now for South Africa. A roar from court one. England, Uganda coming up on the other court. Got a feeling without even looking round, maybe the England Roses have come out to do a bit of a warm up. I've looked round, they have. <laughs> <laughs> and you just missed a fantastic interception on our court. And once again, those attackers being really happy to drive all the way down to their two thirds line and getting in and amongst it and winning ball back for their team. That is an absolute desire, delight. And I think I've jinxed Siggy Berger. And Kath, your face, she missed. Can you believe it? And it was a clear miss as well. It wasn't even a close one. But understandably, Mickey, you know this better than most. She'll, she'll, she'll be a little bit nervous. She's been given the opportunity by Norma Plummer. She's been brought into the team for an injury, exactly like she was last year in the Commonwealth Games when she wasn't first in the squad but got brought in. I think it was for Pog Eater who was, was injured. Yeah, it was. But, you know, this is why coaches nowadays are so smart. We saw it in the Australia game earlier, her running her debuts out really early on so they, they, they get all of those pre-game nerves out nice and early. Again, we spoke all game about the attackers doing their work on the defence. We see Mariah Holtzhausen getting her hands involved there, just as she puts her teammate underneath a lot of pressure to catch the ball. <laughs> underneath two Trinidad and Tobago defenders. But yeah, you know, coaches have to be really smart. They have to get all of their players out as early as they can within reason and not give a result of a game away. But to try and get all of those nerves, tournament nerves, out and expose players to the level of this tournament. The reality of the situation is it would be really difficult to run a whole just one seven out for the duration of this tournament but you have to toss that up with you know this isn't a competition for you to expose players and, and breathe them in you know this tournament is all about winning 
look at that athleticism from Samantha Wallace there, able to keep control of the ball before she hits the floor because you are not allowed to pass the ball if you are not on your feet in that ball. So you have to make sure that you are standing and your feet are at least grounded before you can release the ball. So that was really great awareness from her there. So 59-36, Wallace pops another one in, shooting at 92%. And you see here, great strength. Oh, and she just releases the ball before she touches the floor, which is so, so important. And really, really hard to do when you have so many different things to think about. So patience from South Africa. Oh, chasing it down. <laughs> yeah, Nella Jack really getting in and amongst it, showing that mongrel there to be able to scrap on that circle edge and come out of ball. But once again, we see Bongi Msomi, who's moved into that centre position, providing the options on the circle edge and giving a nice, easy route into goal for her shooters. So Holtzhausen puts one in. 80% she's shooting at. Bad shot from goalkeeper from her landing foot. Back, Again, on by Louise Travis giving nice clear instructions there to McCarthy, making sure that the penalty is set. Because if you do not set the penalty correctly, the umpire can and actually is able to overturn the penalty to the other team. So really important as a player, you're aware of everything that's going around. Although it is insanely loud in here and there's lots going on with two courts running, you are linked into that umpire in the moment contact. so that you can listen to their instructions. Goalkeeper, contact. Yes. So. With the goalkeeper. We see Daystar Swift coming onto the court for Trinidad and Tobago. And she's a really interesting one for me because it's just been announced, or not that long ago, that she is actually going to compete overseas next year. Um, so Daystar Swift is going to be representing the Northern Stars across the New Zealand League. So an interesting one to watch out there, see what creativity she can bring to that Trinidad and Tobago defensive end. And as we say that, they're attacking, make another unforced error. So I think Wesley Gomes will be really unhappy with the amount of ball that they've gifted South Africa with today. We need to put one of those gadgets on Bongi and Zomi to see how far she covers in a world-class netball game. That was phenomenal. She ran down the court, she kept it in play, and it goes down the opposite end. Absolutely wonderful stuff from the South African. And Berger under the post. Why is it every time you talk, something happens inside the shooting circle? We've seen it I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> Best not to. Let's see if Trinidad and Tobago can do something with the ball down court. And again, we see that unconventional cross court across three channels ball. The pressure that South Africa have been putting them under today, making them go long cross court, make unforced errors. Sammy Wallace does great strength there to pull the ball in with two hands and a nice smart offload underneath the post. And the the goalkeeper for South Africa. Pulled up, a little bit of a shoulder action, which she shouldn't be doing. So Trinidad and Tobago centre pass. Under 10 minutes remaining Bart's of this match. Centre. Contact goal defence. Carla Pretorius shrugging her shoulders there. It was a clear contact, unfortunately. But a fantastic shot from Samantha Wallace. Edge of circle. She's getting some feedback from Rhonda John Davis, the superstar on court defender. herself, just to give her that nod and say that was great. Good job. Keep it coming. So, 62-40, South Africa lead. They're six apiece, though, in this fourth quarter in terms of goals so far. I think attributing to the changes that Norma Plum has made. And Wesley Gomes has made. And the nervy nature of Siggy Berger as well, helping it a six apiece. You can see Wesley Gomes sitting on the side of the court, straight in our eye line here, just unhappy with that last one. You know, we call that a coach killer, which is like an unforced error, so something that's within your control. So dropping the ball, for example, underneath no pressure. Um, and you see there McCarthy breaking on the centre pass. Something you can't afford to do, especially when you're in a quarter that is really competitive and it is going goal for goal. You know, you have to take out the end score now because the end score is probably done. But again, we're playing for your bib, so make sure that we're really competitive. Great hold, great take from Ziggler Berger inside that South African shooting circle. That will give her confidence. How 
hadn't spoken and she scored twice. <laughs> See, Ziggy Berger. Wow, I What's love that, that telling you. A big fan of the player making her World Cup debut today for South Africa, and her side are now leading 65-40 with under seven minutes remaining. So, contact centre. Good strong finish. From Trinidad and Tobago would be appreciated by them and their fans. Well, if it could be as strong Kathy. as that take, because that Samantha Wallace just grabbed that ball with there, then they might be in with a shot because that was fantastic under all sorts of pressure from Carla Mostert there. So there's your quarter by quarter stats. Contact, bring defence here. The only stat that matters in any netball match, but especially in the World Cup, is the one after the four quarters of 15 minutes, which is going to go the way of South Africa with just over six minutes remaining. A second bite at the Sporting Cherry for Berger. Pops another one in, finding a rhythm now. Here's the 23-year-old. And her head looks to the ceiling there as even that feed was a little bit too high for the already very tall Samantha Wallace. But as the consummate professional straight back onto defence as quick as you like, South Africa transitioning down the court. Bonky and Somi taking every other feed to get her team to that circle edge. And a great change of direction underneath that post from Sigrid Berger. Now we see that change of dynamic, not just the holding shooter, she has the ability to move as well, which, to be fair, both her and Denise Potke to have underneath that post. And as we see a change, Vembella coming onto the court as well, which means every single one of the oh, South African players is going to get some playing minutes under their belt today. That's super smart coaching from Norma Plummer. It's as if she's been here before. <laughs> well, she's won that World Cup gold in 1975, as I mentioned previously. But let's not forget, she's also coached Australia twice to World Cup gold in 07 and 2011. Norma, I know what I'm talking about. Plummer is going to be very happy with her South African side. She doesn't look it, she's just to our left there of the shot. I'm going to tell her you said that, by the way. She's very scary, so... That was a compliment, Norma. I know what I'm talking oh, Norma, about. Plummer. Yeah. Norma's great. One of the greatest coaches this world has probably ever seen and deserves every bit of accolade she gets, so... Uh... Yeah, we'll keep going across. It'll probably... There she is. Look at her. Love She's great, Norma. isn't she? Her earrings are my favourite part. She wears them everywhere, and I love that. Keeping the glamour. Well, she will be happy because with under five minutes remaining in their first match of this Netball World Cup, South Africa are going to go out winners against Trinidad and Tobago, looking to pass the 70 goal mark, which they will do with over four minutes remaining. Fifth at the Commonwealth Games last year on the Gold Coast in Australia. And more changes being made are oh, the wing attack. Rhonda John Davis in a six World Cup, record setting six World Cup. Nick's named Eye in the Storm. No, Eye in the Sky is her nickname, Nikki. Is that because of her CSI job? Or? No, because apparently a former teammate called her because of a great vision on court. You see? Well, that was a fantastic vision from Guerrero on the circle edge and a great screen inside the shooting circle from both Trinidad shooters there. They'll be really happy with that. And they should take some confidence from that because, you know, against this defensive pairing, that's really hard to do. Pumsa Mawaini and Carla Pretorius are an absolute standout defence partnership. Let's caution, let's attention or partner. Move for the elbow, attention. You see a little bit of Argy Bargy underneath that shooting post there. Ziggy Berger proving that she's as tough as they come. Happy to rip that ball in, not letting a defender take it off her. And we saw a caution there as well. Yeah. Look at this screen, edge of the circle, confusing all sorts inside that South African defensive end with Vimbella and Moeni, which isn't a combination that we see usually. As I say that though, they get another contact call and an opportunity to get the ball back and drive down the court nice and strongly there all the way through the middle third. Hear the umpires <laughs> close to our mics. Shouting, screaming. Control of this game. Causing contact, goal defense, top of the circle. Trinidad Tobago defenders are getting a little bit scrappy now. Now that they're getting tired. You see the lack of footwork, the lack of ability to come all the way round shooters' bodies, which means they're more likely, like you see there, to be a little bit clumsy. I'm sure there's no intent in it, but catching the body of the shooters as they're going through. We see a caution hand out to Daystar Swift earlier. And a little bit of a wardrobe oh. malfunction. 
Velcro back on. Under three minutes remaining then, 72-43. Bongi and Somi has just got an engine that will run for days. Last yep. quarter of the game, two minutes to go, full game in her legs, and she's still coming out with defensive tips, intercepts and gathers. That's a catch-up for you, isn't it? it? Certainly is, both of these teams. A mixture of youth and experience. South Africa have got five debuts in the World Cup in their squad. Six debuts for the Trinidad and Tobago squad. The head coaches give them a run out. And it's South Africa with the centre pass. Coming up to two minutes remaining. And Zomi again. Oh, great take from Ziggy Berg. A slight miscommunication on the feed there. That's why you see the Trinidad and Tobago Calypso girls. Defenders slap their hands together, a little bit frustrated, not able to come out with that. A good hands and a nice confident finish from Ziggy Berger, who's sitting on 13 out of 15, which is a good shooting percentage for coming on in that last quarter. Lovely high numbers as well for 15 minutes worth of football. Another turnover from the South African attackers. Fantastic hands from the birthday girl. Is that Gretel to pull that ball in? South Africa! So, Ziggy Berger, let's look at that turnover. Really settled in nicely, as Mickey Austin said in this third quarter. It's not the get though. Denise Pogita, 42 from 43, she shot before she was taken off court. Really did put a good shift in for the South African side at 98%. But we're coming up to the final minute of this first match in the World Cup for South Africa and Trinidad and Tobago. They really did put some pressure Trinidad and Tobago on South Africa in the first quarter they just led by four goals after the first 15 minutes but then the screw was turned by Norma Plummer's side fantastic skill to be able to take that ball around the circle edge unfortunately just creeping offside and into the circle which is a wing defense you are not allowed to do hence why the ball was given back to Trinidad and Tobago so South Africa's highest score at the Netball World Cup against Trinidad and Tobago is 85, and their biggest win 55. So not quite that today for the South African side, but what they have got is their first win of this Vitality Netball World Cup, and that is exactly what they'd have wanted before they face Fiji tomorrow and Jamaica on Sunday. A run out, as Mickey Austin said, of all of the squad for South Africa. Norma Plummer giving all her players court time. But Trinidad will go on tomorrow to play Jamaica. And the ball is flung high, just out of time. Oh, and it doesn't matter for Berger. Because South Africa take the win here in their first match, 76 to 45. Exactly, Mickey, what head coach Norma would have wanted. Yeah, I think she'll just be looking at it as game one, job done, to be honest. You know, it's important that they get those first minutes under their belt and they get the win, more importantly, and that's a great scoreline. All shooters producing the goods, giving her a right headache in terms of selection going forward. So, good job, South Africa. So good respectful hugs, high fives by both of the teams, but it was the world number five, South Africa, that have come out on top against Trinidad and Tobago. The Throti has beat the Calypso girls by 76 goals to 45. A great team performance. Just sum up what it was like to be out on court in a World Cup for South Africa again. Um, it's just an amazing feeling. I mean, we have so many supporters out there. Um, we just see South African flags everywhere. It's our first, well, game together, like professional game together as a team again. And I think the vibe is just awesome. Um, we've been working hard um, towards the World Cup, everyone on their own, and just coming together and just gelling like that in our first official um, World Cup game. I'm so proud of my team. I couldn't have done this without them. There are partnerships all across the court that look really, really solid. Are you surprised by how well you gel? Because you, you seem quite surprised at, in yourself. <laughs> well, there were some in England, there were some in Australia, some in, in New Zealand, so it's all different styles. And then, I mean, when we come together, we just gel with three different styles of play. I mean, okay, and four South African as well. So I'm surprised, but 
I'm not surprised because we just know each other so well and we just connect off the court. So on court, it's just smooth going, sort of. There's been a lot of talk in the build-up to this World Cup about how you can't write South Africa off and you kind of uh, might be the dark horses in the competition. What's the feeling amongst the team about that kind of that kind of conversation around you? Um, I just think we're going to take it game by day and we're going to put our best foot forward in every game, um, all of the effort into each game, and then when we get there, we get there. But our hopes are very high. Everyone's hopes are high for us to up our ranking this World Cup and that's what we're work, uh, working towards so fingers crossed um, but there's positive, positive vibes. Well, you only missed one shot today, Fiji up next, you're going for that 100%? <laughs> um, it's always like everyone's, nobody's perfect so I'm just happy with um, what I've put out there today and but it, like I said it's my teammates that make it so much easier for me just to get the ball into me and Mareika getting some load off me so hopefully 100% but if I can just help them win, <laughs> then I'm very happy. <laughs> well, well played today. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. Well, Norma, you're up and running. A first win on the board. How do you feel about that performance? Uh, well, yeah, it was a little bit um, up and down, but I was pleased that we got out in the court and we were able to put some uh, play together. And uh, I think um, generally it's just nice to get the first one out of the way. Which of your combinations did you feel gelled really well? Because just talking to Lenit, she said that they were almost surprised by how well the team have come together when they haven't had much opportunity to play as a team. Yeah, that's right. Not since January quad. So, you know, a couple of games against Wales certainly helped. But now, you know, in, into this, I think we can start really building. Um, I, you know, all... Um, you know, good play by uh, Trinidad first quarter. It was really good. It was tough. And I did expect them to come out. I didn't take any notice of the Wales uh, result that they had because I know what Trinidad are like. And, you know, they've got some great athletes. That You know, Sam Wallace is very good. So she's a bit tough to beat. But generally, overall, I think we just built in the game and got stronger and stronger. And I would have introduced most of the bench at, by the end of the, the last quarter. Just how critical is that fact that you're able to give most of your players a good run out this early on in a competition? Oh, well, when I coach, I coach 12 players. I don't just coach seven because if you can't use your bench and you get an injury, you're in trouble. So you really got to use your bench. Fiji up next. What will you be looking to clean up in, from that game going into your next one? Oh, well, I think we can start a different lineup and, uh, and hopefully give everybody else the run. It was the probably a couple there today that didn't but um you know we played Fiji sort of 12 months ago and uh you know Vicky's been working with them since then so they could come out with a few new surprises so again you, you always just got to be wary of uh, what's around the corner well I get the impression of a coach that always knows what's coming well played today thank you so Wesley Gomes not the performance you'd want from your team today what did you make of that showing um, first, we must say congratulations, South Africa. It's a well-coached team. They, um, they showed why they are ranked number five in the, um, the world. Um, yeah, I expected a little better. I expected a little better results, but it's what it is. You were very competitive in the first quarter, weren't you? And then the game really felt like it slipped away with you. It came back a little bit in the fourth when there was a lot of changes from, from both teams. How frustrating is it to have seen that first quarter really up there? It was only four goals in it and to then let it run away. Well, um, we, we, will, we normally, uh, we, when we come to these tournaments, we normally have problems adjusting to the contact. So we, we played a very good first quarter and then the contact just got to us. Do you think the slight lack maybe of test match preparation and practice hindered you? I'm sure it's that. I'm sure it's that. What will you be working on going to your next game? Jamaica up next, the top seed in a very tough Group C. Uh, we played them in September last year, so we, 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 know, we know what to expect from them. Just finally as well, that goal attack position, we saw you flip-flop between a few players today with that. Are you still figuring out your best combination in the shooting circle? No, I, I know the best combination is, is with Khalifa and Samantha, but Khalifa was a little winded today, so we try to give her a little rest. Okay, well, best of luck against Jamaica. Thank you. Thank you.